to this. Iran, a country drier than the Sahara when it comes to alcohol. Booze is banned. And yet I find myself smack bang in the middle of a whiskey fueled escapade. Buckle up, folks, because this solo trip to Iran was anything but dry. Whether this was a mistake, a mishap, a mayhem, or a misadventure, this definitely was about mission mojo. Welcome to Iran, a land where the carpets are magical, the kofta meatballs are legendary, and the alcohol, well, <laughs> is strictly off limits. But hey, what's a trip without a bit of rule bending, right? The dress code in Iran is not terribly strict. You can wear pants, long pants. I'm talking about ladies, obviously. You can wear long pants as long as you wear a loose top that covers over the buttocks. In terms of headdress, you can wear a scarf. They're not terribly strict about what is exposed outside of the scarf. A little bit of hair showing is totally acceptable but you have to wear the scarf and the police will stop you if you are not wearing a scarf. So there I was, a solo traveler in Iran, armed with nothing but my adventurous spirit and a whole lot of mojo. Everybody advised me to hire a driver saying that the roads were perilous. So I did that. I hired this fabulous gentleman, but the roads were safer than a teddy bear's picnic. And whilst there were many advantages to having a driver who could speak English, I think I would have preferred to have been on my own. Iran, wow, with the friendliest people ever. I've traveled far and wide and Iranians, hands down, the friendliest people that I've ever come across the best hosts, offering breakfasts, lunches, dinners, even overnight stays, op opening their homes wide and their hearts even wider, wanting to have conversations, wanting to share and show, absolutely fantastic. One day, my driver and I stopped in a tiny village for tea. Now, in Iran, they have these huge big urns just outside shops and they've got boiling water and you're invited to help yourself so we did and my driver had packed tea and biscuits and so we settled outside this little shop and we had tea hot tea and biscuits we were a group of gentlemen sitting nearby watching us with great interest <laughs> Feeling a little bit guilty about using the amenities, I went into the little shop and I bought some snacks and some chips just to feel that I'm paying my way. And along came this nomad wearing this funny little hat. So I asked one of the gentlemen sitting outside if I could take a photo. So what does he do? He jumps up, he goes to the nomad, he grabs the nomad's hat, he puts it on and he poses for a photograph. Not quite the photo op that I had envisioned, <laughs> but I got a picture of the hat. Next, he asks if I want to see an ancient bridge. Obviously, I say yes. So off we go, chasing this guy in his monster 4x4, one of the very few that I saw while I was in Iran. And voila, a thousand-year-old bridge. Spent a little while exploring and then were about to leave. But wait, there's more. This gentleman, who turns out to be the head man of the village, invites us for lunch. So up the hill we go to a colossal house where half the village, it appears as though half the village, it was a tiny village, there weren't that many, where half the village is waiting, men everywhere, no woman in sight. We were ushered into this huge room with a fitted Persian carpet, the full size of the room. I wondered if the, the house was built around the carpet or if the carpet was 
made to fit the room. And then out came fruit and shisha. Awkward conversations translated by my driver. Feast time, invisible female fairies have prepared a banquet in another room, fit for royalty. We ate like there was no tomorrow. And then the plot thickens. Out comes the contraband. 15-year-old dimple head whiskey. Remember, Iran is a dry country. Alcohol here could get you 80 lashes, jail or worse. Looking over my shoulder rather nervously, <laughs> but hey, bottoms up. Then they handed me a massive old Persian rifle. It had this incredible Persian crest on it, like something straight out of a fairy tale. A grand lion holding an eastern sword in front of a rising sun on the horizon. And if that wasn't enough, the lion was topped off with a wreath and a crown. I was holding this majestic piece of history belonging to the village headman himself. So there I was, tipsy, posing like an ancient warrior, all very legal, I'm sure. At that moment, I felt that I had all the mojo in the world. After the whiskey was finished, out came the arak and the homemade red wine. Note to self. Never drink anything labeled homemade in a dry country. It was, let's just say, not the finest vintage. We were invited to spend the night, and I must say, I really wanted to do that, but unfortunately, my driver had to head home. Before leaving, I had a mission to thank the invisible chefs. I handed over chocolates that I had bought as souvenirs to take home, and the woman finally visible were thrilled. Chocolates and translated chit chat, international diplomacy at its finest. So there you have it, a dry country, an unforgettable journey, and a story that will age like fine wine, like fine contraband wine. <laughs> Cheers to unexpected adventures. When I got back to Shiraz and I, was, I stayed in a, 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 an accommodation, I was chatting to a French woman who was also traveling solo, and I shared with her that I'd had some contraband whiskey. And she smiled and said, so did I. <laughs> P.S. On a different trip altogether to Musandam, the northernmost tip of Oman, I witnessed some high seas trading that put my Iranian adventure into perspective. Kasabi is so close to Iran that the port is used to smuggle cigarettes, alcohol, and electronic goods into Iran in return for goats. Smugglers in small speedboats arrive in Kasab after sunrise. They load their boats and head off before sunset on their two-hour ride to Iran, and they leave at this time to conform with Omani immigration laws. We saw dozens of boats heading out as the sun was setting. Trading is illegal in Iran, so it is a dangerous occupation. <laughs> it makes my brush with Iranian whiskey seem almost tame. PPS. There are several compelling reasons to consider visiting Iran, and I highly recommend that you make the trip. It has such a rich history and culture, everything, art, literature, architect, mosques, palaces, gardens, absolutely magnificent. The hospitality and warmth, which I've mentioned before, they just want to talk and share and invite you. I was invited into homes for, for lunches. I was invited to spend the night in various people's homes. It was so welcoming, so open. 
oh, I'm, I can't tell you how friendly. They just want to talk, even though their English is not very good. <laughs> And then, of course, the beauty of the country, such diverse landscapes, the sea, the mountains. It's just really quite exquisite. Culinary delights. Being a Piscatarian, obviously, I only had fish where it was available, but the meat apparently is fantastic. And then the sweets, a wide array of sweets and pastries. Oh, thank goodness I bought some to take home that I could give uh, to those wonderful ladies who made that wonderful meal for me. Also, there are so many UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, you just can't go wrong to get your fill of, of history. The unique experiences, it really, you, you can explore the ancient bazaars, the carpet shops, uh, the music, such beautiful traditional music. Oh, the experiences that are unique and memorable. Overall, visiting Iran offers a chance to delve into a rich cultural tapestry, experience warm hospitality, and explore landscapes and historical sites that are both stunning and significant. Please subscribe to my channel. Look out for more videos that are coming on Mission Mojo. Find out about all my mistakes, mishaps, mayhem, and misadventure. And there are videos on many other topics like finding your feet after failure and how to be brave to eradicate gender-based violence. And there are very many other topics to explore. So please, Click on to these videos, do watch, and I appreciate it if you watch the video till the end. Thank you so much and have a mojo day.